Guys, ChrisDComedy.com for my Tiki Wikis. I got shows this Friday and Saturday, January 12th and 13th. We got Friday, January 12th in Mag at the Magnolia Theater in El Cajon, California, San Diego, and January 13th at the Wiltern in Los Angeles. Tickets, ChrisDComedy.com. Chrissy, California, I will not be in your area for probably a year and a half, so come down, hang out. Then cup next month, February 2nd, in Nashville, February 3rd, Washington, D.C., February 8th, Reno, Nevada, the Grand Sierra Resort. And then we're going to film my special sometime in February, March, still in Atlanta. But that is not on sale yet, so I don't know. February 8th in Reno could be my last show for a year plus. ChristyComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. Go do it. And MikeCannonComedy.com for all of my dates. Thank you so much to all the chaos people that have been coming out lately. Thank you for identifying yourself. It's very cool. January 11th through the 14th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida for the Sunshine Comedy Fest. New festival, first year. No idea how it's going to go. Come out. Tickets at my site. And then the 25th of January, I'm in Vegas. Then I'm in Chandler, Arizona, right outside of Phoenix, January 26th through the 27th. I got Austin, Texas on February 15th at the Vulcan. February 16th and the 17th, I'm in Fort worth texas and then uh, i'm coming back around through jersey and baltimore in march but all dates coming in being added mikecannoncomedy.com very exciting stuff so be on the lookout for that hi i'm slushy what's up everybody welcome to the Chrissy Chaos Podcast, coming to you live from the Slam headquarters in Long Island City with my friend Mike Cannon, hey, hey. who is not trans. For anyone asking, since they saw the Dave Chappelle special, they're saying, is Chappelle talking about Mike Cannon? The answer is no, no, no. Um, I didn't see the Dave Chappelle special. I know a lot of uh, people are talking about it. I haven't seen it, but I heard it was very transy. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. What I did you think? I thought the opening joke was was like brilliant because it was about Norm McDonald, Norm McDonald in the style. Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. It was about Norm McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Just starting the new year off with a horrible stutter. Yes. Do, I, do you sound? Do you hear my? Yeah. I sound bad, right? No, you don't sound bad, but you sound like um, conflicted. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I'm in a, a weird gray area of estrogen and testosterone. What is going on? What do you, do you feel sick? I feel like just all of the all of the hubbub of the holidays is kind of catching up in my body all at once, and the lack of sleep and nutrition and just general care for my body is just all kind of falling down on me. Well, I don't. You look good. Oh, you, you do. You do look good. I told you as soon as I walk in, I thought you look thin, and I didn't mean that because sometimes that happens to me. People are like, oh, you're losing weight. Or some somebody wrote on my Instagram uh, the other day, skinny mini, and I yeah, was like, yeah. I'll kill you and your family. As a man, I'm that jacked. never that yeah, that never <laughs> feels good. You want to hear lean yeah. if you're looking thinner. Yes. If if somebody says thin, like Nicole the other day, LeBron James. No, I said we're coming to you live from Slam. Yeah, we, we I said, said it. it. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Vito. We got Vito, uh, Wreck It Ralph Vito in the back, um, <laughs> not listening. In sweats, uh, showing in off sweats, his hammer. <laughs> who we have told, we just told him, and we are true. And, we'll, you know, we, we, Vito will post a pic of himself. If he took testosterone, he would have the biggest arms. It would almost be like Guinness Book of World Records, biggest yeah. arms. You ever see those, like, butterball turkeys that are so yes. very clearly injected with hormones? Yes. That's what your upper body looks like. Yes. Really? Like, just okay. that kind of, like... Just build and a barrel chest, yes, and your arms you, look like drumsticks. You have you look like a cooked ham, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. And then we have new person to the group, John Grady, um, Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. When you see a picture of him, you might call him Jihad John. He, <laughs> he does have a bit of an ISIS Al Qaeda beard vibe, right? Yeah, he, In a way, he looks like he defected and then you know came back to tell America what he, we're doing wrong. He's a perfect example of a guy. His name is John Grady. Right, and he's 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 a white Irish man, I'd assume, but he's the kind of guy I guarantee you. TSA coming back internationally from JFK takes a second peek at his passport yeah. because of the way he looks a little muzzy. Well, for sure, and he's like a slight redhead, but it's red enough to where it looks like you yes. might dye it red, like that flavor of Muslim. If I said this is actually like if I if I surprised you and I said you know what for, he's not working for us, I said we got a new guest. You know, we have a guest. It's Jihad John. Remember Jihad John? I brought him in. You would be like, oh, yeah, that's him. I, I think yeah. Jihad John is dead, though. Is he? I don't know. R.I.P. 
Damn. <laughs> R.I.P. J.J. Are you now? Let me ask you, because you do have these eyes that look perpetually stoned. There, <laughs> it's kind of very brewer. But are you stoned, or is that just your face, or is that Not fetal right. alcohol syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, people have been asking me since middle school if I'm high, but now I just squinty eyes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. We have the entire digital staff of the New York Mets working for us here at the Chrissy Chaos <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> and it is no surprise that as soon as I took the entire Mets digital staff to work for my podcast, their golden pitchers blew their arms out, got <laughs> traded, and then their big play so far was to trade for the center fielder for the New York Yankees or the outfielder for the New York Yankees, Harrison Bader, who looks exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Mets have now taken... Uh, I am slowly taking over the Mets franchise, and let me tell you something... The neighborhood of Middle Village, Queens, is very upset. <laughs> They're like, nobody messes with my Mets. I like the oh, idea okay. of you poisoning the organization from yes. the inside out just as a pure Yankee fan, too. Yes. You're just trying to submarine them. Yes, well, I, I struck up a, a, a great, I would call it a great yeah, friendship. You do look right. like that guy. Yeah, that's what they say, which I tried to grow my hair. That was the look I was going for. You have better grow- lips. Yeah, S- suck that, Harrison. <laughs> He's from upstate New York. I think he's yeah. banged probably girls we know. I would almost guarantee he's banged girls he's, we know. He's from Bronxville. Oh. There you go. He went to Horace Mann. Oh, yeah. And his cousin is in Vampire Weekend. There you go. No shit. I oh, guarantee Nepo, you Harrison Bader <laughs> has had sex with a woman. If you are a woman that and you're okay with this and you have had sex or made out or had some type of intercourse or know a girl who's who's done something with Harrison Bader, please identify yourself at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. <laughs> I'm serious, I because I am guaranteeing you, yeah. I am guaranteeing you that absolutely some woman has had sex with Harrison Bader, just like, and I, I'm not going to name it publicly, but I have a friend who found out after he was already married that his already locked-in wife banged <laughs> <laughs> Oh my and, god! And, and 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 once or or banged one of them, and that's a tough <laughs> pill to swallow. <laughs> and and it's one of those things. It's one yeah. of those things where it hurts, and I get it. I got a message. This was three years ago, and I was still on the IG. Somebody DM me. I can. I'll text Brian to see if he can find it. Somebody DM me and said, "Dude, I'm a I'm a fan. I'm just reaching out because he said my therapist told me I have to get this off my chest." You had sex with my wife when she was single, <laughs> and I found out after the wedding, and it almost truly made us get a divorce because I can't handle it. He goes, so I just wanted <laughs> it to get her off my chest that you had fully consensual pl- sex with her Yeah. Uh, after a show, and it just hurts because I was a fan, and it's nobody was lying. Like, it was, I'm yeah. you know, paraphrasing, but he was like, I just, it helps me to get it off my chest that now you know. I think that's weirder. Yeah. I think reaching out almost makes it a cuck situation. Yes. Whereas before, it was just in the past, man. Yes. He has no idea that's happening. But just to, ne- like, I need you to know in your consciousness that you had sex with my wife and it's going to affect yeah. me forever. And I'm going to be completely open and honest and 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 real. I, he's, you know, I looked at his Instagram profile and saw his wife and I do not remember having sex with her or even who she is. So it's either, it's either one of two things. Either it was in the time when I was in a full kind of sex tornado where I was just going after trying to absolutely fill these open voids in my soul to try to, you know, like have sex with women that were looking for the same thing, just empty sex, which was, you know, I'm in a much healthier place right now. It's either that or he meant to message Chris <laughs> Dude, there was one time, did I ever tell you this story? There was one time, I told Chris D'Elia this. There was one time where I literally, bro, I'm talking about flown out with a first class ticket, a dad reached out through the proper channels to my agent, through the pro- a, 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 a corporate you know gig, like a birthday party gig, for his 21-year-old daughter mm-hmm. to come out to Seattle and perform at their event space that they rented for his daughter's 21st birthday. I went out there, first class ticket, good pay, five-star hotel, like un- like a gig I had to say yes to. This was about four or five years ago that I had to say yes to. Go out, do the show. I can tell when I'm up there on the show that People are having a good time, but also extremely confused. At the end of the show, the father 
told the daughter, but this was your favorite comic, and she she was talking about Chris D'Elia. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he did it. He messaged with the right intention, and he thought he had booked fully <laughs> Chris D'Elia, his daughter's favorite comic, <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> and, and that's why I say maybe anytime I get like a message where I'm like, I don't think this person's talking about me. I'm like, they mean the other, they mean Chris D'Elia. That's and, and so how funny was that? And the guy, and then, you know, I, I messaged D'Elia that, you know, five, six years ago, and he was like hilarious. <laughs> Before laugh. the troubles. Yeah, he was like <laughs> hilarious, laughing or whatever. And I said, I was like, dude, do you want to like, you know, split? Like, do you want me to give you some of this money? And he was like, no. <laughs> I'm good. I, I'm on a sold out Fucking $20 million plus tour. That's amazing. That would be like if I got flown down to Atlanta for a soul food restaurant opening and they introduced <laughs> me and people were like, that's not Nick Cannon. <laughs> how funny would it be? How funny would it be if they ushered you through like the ER doors when Mariah Carey was giving birth? <laughs> or they just or Mr. They, Cannon? Mr. Cannon, come through. Or anyone he has like 13 more kids since then. Imagine yeah. like just somebody, they're like, we gotta get Nick, he's gonna have another kid and they bring in Mike. I could stand in. I'll be a stand-in cannon. Yeah. Just That's not bad. I used to get introduced like that all the time when we would do hood room. Remember when yeah. we do like Mocha Lounge sure. and all that shit? When we first started, every single hood host in New York yeah. City thought it was hilarious to be like, this next guy, yeah. he is Nick Cannon's Nick? cousin. Yeah, fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, of course, my opener would sink me immediately because I had to address it. And I'm like, no, we're not related very clearly, but let's not get into how we share a last name. Yes, alluding to slavery yep and then <laughs> and, and then sure. nobody would get it no, no they'd get it yeah. they just weren't too they weren't too fond of it that's like you know your uh wife's cousin was the great mike di stefano great comedian mm. passed away suddenly heart attack you know over 10 years ago now and my last name is de stefano and so a lot of people when especially when i first started would would accidentally call me Mike, Mike, Mike DiStefano, like whatever, because they thought, and then I, can't, after he died, I can't tell you how many times, like the veteran comedians would be like, I wish the other DiStefano was alive and you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would just have to sit there and Dude, deal with it. That just, I just hung out with Mikey D's brother, Joe. Joe is uh, a great guy. At, at Christmas, I see him every Christmas Eve. He's part of my, part of my family. The fact that he's still alive is amazing. He's, he's hanging on hanging for on. dear life. Yeah. Uh, but I've had the same, same conversation verbatim running for four years in a row. <laughs> like every joke, every beat of the conversation, 100% the same. And each year he mentions you yeah. and about how he thought like somebody introduced you as Mike DiStefano and they got you there as Mike DiStefano paid you all this money and it turns out you were you and he thought you were a grifter yes. or something that yeah. were like billing your name as Mike to yeah. try to get his gigs. Yeah. And he approached you and you were like, I didn't know. And he and he was like, I was gonna fuck this kid up or something. Right. I don't even know if it's a real story, but he told me he's like, he's like, I was gonna fight him at this comedy club, but then the booker told me that they messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I that's was like, what what yeah, is the, this story? I dude? think the booker, I think it was the booker who was being a grifter doing yeah, yeah. that. I'll tell you his name. You know who it is. I do. And when I tell you who it is, you're like, oh, that little motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Um, because you know he's just a scum. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly. Yeah, know. Well, I, you know what actually? I'm going to say the full name with the full story at patreon.com slash Christy comedy. Beautiful. We're beefing up the Patreon folks. We're beefing it up. I'm going to get scandalous over there. Um, <laughs> we're going to, and we should tell people Monday's post show is going to be the new release day. Yes. Okay. Monday's post show will be the, we have the, the YouTube out. The YouTube episode will come out Monday. And then the Patreon about that episode will come out. That same Monday, that yeah. same day, a couple hours later, and then Friday we'll we'll give some bonus content, right? That'll and then be, yeah, Monday will be your guarantee. Monday's a guarantee, so the Patreon's just shifting a little bit. We're leaning back in, so just it's going to be good. That's great. Uh, to also add new stuff, the uh, hotline. Yes. Right. Yes. What? Yeah. We're gonna Vito's gonna pull up that number. We're gonna start. We want to start taking your calls and voicemails, but specifically, and I'll change the voicemail number. Or we'll change the voicemail. Mike and I's both. We'll re-record one. But specifically, I want to answer questions for you about if you have any questions about parenting, specifically yeah. what's going on with you and your kids. If we can help you out or funny stories, and then if you're not a parent about relationships and STDs. <laughs> yeah. We can talk to you about that. Well, because clearly, I mean, you know, 
we're 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 two dudes trying our very very best to be good dads, but we're also not just like the queefy gentle parenting no. guys that talk softly into the camera on TikTok. Right. So we're we're trying to approach this from an authentic yes place as just guys. So yes. hopefully that you guys can relate to that. Any questions you have, we'll right. fucking answer. By the way, that Chrissy Chaos hotline is 347-343-3321. That's 347-343-3321. If you can't memorize it, just press a bunch of threes on your phone <laughs> and you'll get to the hotline. It's so many threes, it's unbelievable. It's a good number. Um, okay, dude, so speaking about parenting, I did a you know scooter over the shoulder. Uh, Chrissy, it's a little bit I do on my social media now, like parenting tips. Um, I was doing push-ups the other day and I was watching Delilah and Violet because Jasmine was doing her spin class. <laughs> so I was watching the kids uh -huh. alone. It's not, nature doesn't want that. <laughs> I was watching the mom's supposed to be there. No, I'm kidding. But I was watching the kids and um, we're having a great day. You know, my eight-year-old daughter, two-year-old daughter, and I'm trying to get my little workout in, right? Push-ups, sit-ups, whatever. And my two-year-old is like, horsey, horsey. I want to play horsey. Mm. And I was like, let me just get more set. I got to get a set of 50. You know, like you have these, we have these like arbitrary numbers in yeah. our head. Like I got to get 200. And so I'm like, let me just get through it. And she's just like waiting there, you know, kind of like, and then she starts to look like dejected. Yeah. And then my two-year-old, but then my eight-year-old says to me, she's like, daddy, like play with her. Like she's waiting for you to play with her. And huh. I was like, Oh my God. I was like, there's, cause there's so many times where I just think my two-year-old like doesn't even have a soul yet. Right, right, where I'm yeah, just like, yeah. she has no feelings. <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. can just give her anything and she'll be okay. My eight-year-old does, but my two-year-old doesn't, which couldn't be more wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you how I learned, I've been learning self-sabotage lessons the very hard way lately. But I said, why am I doing the push-ups? Why am I exercising? What is the reason? It's not to be ripped and jacked anymore. It's so I can be on the floor to play horsey with my kids because yeah. I know my father at 39 probably couldn't because he was <laughs> yeah. overweight, had his banged up knees. Mm -hmm. I never remember doing that with, or I actually remember wrestling with my dad. I don't remember my father <laughs> bending his knees. Ever. Like not one time. I no. don't remember him getting into an athletic stance. I don't remember yeah. him like coming to my level to yeah. say anything with eye contact. Nothing. Not once. Well, because I think back in the day, like fathers from our, you know, our father's generation, bending the knee meant like you're you're giving in to something and oh, they yeah. wouldn't do it spiritually, emotionally, or physically. No, that's that's how my dad talks about the trans thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I yeah. will not play the game. No. I ne won't bend the knee. Yeah, next thing you know, you, what, next thing you know, I bend the knee, you cut my kneecaps off, you give me a pussy. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, instead, what I did was, I said, you know what, honey? Get on my back. Let's play horsey, get yeah. on my back. And I did like a bear crawl, yes. but I was still getting a form of exercise, incorporating my kids, and then... Rather than I was going to just get to another 20 push-ups, say, and then stop and pay attention to them. But I said, you know what? Why don't I do 20, 30 minutes more of exercise, but include the kids? Yeah. So we did like sprints. We did, I was squatting with them and they were laughing their ass off. And I got one of the best workouts of the week mm. doing that. So it was like this kind of shift in my head mentally, which I know a lot of other parents got to immediately, not eight years into your parenting <laughs> relationship. But I was like, oh, incorporate. I am exercising and being as healthy as I can for them. So when they want my attention and I'm exercising, may incorporate them because this is why I'm doing it. But I bet you've had this realization even before also, because what I've noticed about just parenting is that the clouds part momentarily, you come to an aha moment and you practice that aha moment for a while. And then you forget about it because some other aha thing came up or right. something else, you know, another parenting lane. But then eventually you re-remember it. Right. So it's constantly like dormantly laying in the back of your head, but you need a refresher every once right. in a while to be like, oh, this is, it's funny when you're like, I have to work out. And my son's like, dad, let's race. And I'm like, I can't, I need to go running. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. I'm like, what am I doing? I could just truly just play with you and get the exact right. same physical activity. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of times <laughs> as parents, like, you know, we get, we, we start to say, well, I need me time. I'm focusing yeah. on, but it's like the thing with parenting, I think is like, the me time that you can get, you can get when they're at school or if they have really little kids, like get it, you're gonna get it a lot of the times in moments. You're not gonna get 
an hour to two hours, just you, yeah. unless the kids are in school or unless you wake up before anybody. Those are your only options. If you didn't wake up before anybody and your kids are not in school, then you have to understand that you're. it's gonna be me moments. Take yeah. them, but not this, it, you don't really get this 45 minutes to an hour for just you unless the kids fell asleep. Instead, take, you know, two minute break for you and do something while the kids are occupied with, you know, a KiwiCo or Magic Mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think that's an important realization in general in life. Like there is no sustainability of really anything. Mm -hmm. There's consistency over time, like right. things average out, but sustaining like happiness or whatever, it's almost impossible to just keep it going at an average all the time. Right. So you have to just take advantage of it where where, where and whenever you can. Sim similar to like me time and all that shit. Like I'm like on the road, I'll get to sleep in. I'll finally get a time to rest. I wake up at 8 a.m. Right. I'm up no matter what. It's the same exact routine I would have had I been at home. <laughs> this me time that I've been pining after, I spend looking at pictures and videos of my son. Yep. It's like, yep. it's all, so every single time, it's just the grass is greener. I have this dumb brain that can't be satisfied within the moment I'm in and always just striving to be in the moment I just missed out on. Right. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So that, and I think that's like anxiety. That's like our brains looking for some sort of control. And the only way our brains for sure can control is if we think about the past because it yeah. happened already. And we know this futuristic idea where like, that's what gives us anxiety because it's really just a sense of not having control. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, let me let me. Throw I this. nailed it. <laughs> you did nail it. <laughs> and those. you know why I nailed it? Because hmm. I've been drinking Magic Mind. Yeah. And Magic Mind is one of those things. All you got to do is go to magicmind.com slash Chrissy Chaos and use the promo code Chaos. You're going to get 75% off. This only lasts to the end of January. So hurry up. Magic Mind, I swear, is one of those things where I've been doing shots of it. And yeah, I know you've been doing shots yeah. of it. And I just, all those thoughts that I have about where you say like, you knew this already, but now you're re-remembering yes. it. Magic Mind helps me remember it and kind of close those gaps into like, you know, those gaps of like, kind of being mindless yeah. are much smaller. I don't think this is scientifically proven, but they lube your synapses. Yep. You know what I mean? They let that fire, it goes faster. It also green lights thoughts yes. a bit better. Like all that kind of resistance that I put through my own ideas because I consider myself just a low vibration loser. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen while I'm on In Magic LVL. <laughs> In LVL. It doesn't happen <laughs> while I'm on Magic Mind. Magic Mind allows me to have yeah. confidence in my I, own brain's ability. I love Magic Mind. You know, I forgot to get Vito and John any even a semblance of a Christmas gift. So instead what I did is I went to magicmind.com slash Chrissy Chaos, used the promo code chaos, and I now have 75% off their magic mind until the end of January. And Vito literally wept and said, <laughs> I, this is one of the best gifts I could have ever gotten because I've been really struggling mentally for the past That's 10 why years. the sound works this yes. week. It, <laughs> there it is, folks. The sound will work this week because of Vito's magic mind and Jihadi John's focus on us and not the edits that he's moonlighting for ISIS. Um, so, okay, but, and, you know, like th this whole thing, I think, with parenting and life is like... I. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm like approaching 40, but I've been very forgiving of myself and very, the one thought that I've had in my head a lot as yeah. a parent is that my kids are always watching me, even when I'm having sex with their mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the kids are always watching me. So I was like, my, however I react to things that don't have anything to do with them, when I'm on the phone and something doesn't go my way, when I'm in the car and someone cuts me off, when I'm at the deli, and you know they don't get my order right when i pass a homeless person whatever how i react especially how i talk to their mom it, you know whatever they're watching me so when i get mad at like my daughter now who's 8 yeah. if she is acting a certain way and i'm like why is she acting like that what i'm really saying is why is that part about me that i hate now yes. showing up in my kid yeah. and i'm really just mad at me and it's a it's a main a very like kind of it's a, it's a huge thought that I've had. So I'm being so conscious as of late of how I'm reacting at all times. Well, because kids learn from your actions more than they learn from what you're telling them. So sure. like similarly, you know, I, I'm walking around and I tell crew one thing and I'm really laying it out there how I would like to, you know, for all of us to be. And then in the same tip, I'm acting like I'm acting. You know, so sometimes he'll like bump into something. He bumped into my wife the other day and he goes, damn, dude. <laughs> is she her. trans now? And, yeah, and she just grew a <laughs> cock right at that moment. But it was like, it was You're one of those happy. things. I was just like, I know, now we're going to stay married. Yes. But I was like, I was like, fuck, he absolutely picked that up 
just as like a, you know, just even language, whatever Mm -hmm. it is, just me not being polite in the moment or something like that. And it's just a little thing like that to remind you where you're like, okay, they're, they are constant. The streets is watching Yes, at all times. Yes. I've made a conscious effort, even if there are times where, you know, I'm getting an argument with my girl or like, you know, thing like we're just like, you know, whatever, having a regular parenting issue. Yeah. I, Oh, when I'm leaving the house, especially when my eight-year-old is watching, I hug her and I kiss her no yes. matter what. Because I'm like, I want my daughter at least to see, yes. number one, like what love is. And number two, just because you're having a problem with someone doesn't mean that you can't like try to squash it and walk out 100%. the door happy. After every argument I get in with Nicole, because we we just talk it out like this. And I'll do it in the house because I want him to see, you know, conflict happens. Fights happen. Right. I watch my parents just scrap it out. No big deal. But we are having like just conversations. Right. And I also want him to see like, hey, I'm I'm talking to you like this. And I'm also standing up for myself, but I'm doing it in a respectful way. So right. I want him to be like, hey, if I'm in a relationship, I don't have to necessarily just like say I'm sorry or I'm wrong 100% right. of the time. We right. can find that commonality. You don't have to count out a women. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's 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 just thorough communication where all you can do is show it more than right. tell them how to do it. And, guys, I'm telling you, if you have parenting stories or you have relationship issues specifically, call us at 347-343-3321. That's the Chrissy Chaos Hotline. We're going to pick the three or four best calls, voicemails. I'm going to read them at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Here's one right now just to give you one out there on the YouTube <laughs> of what we're talking about. Here's a voicemail that we're gonna, Mike and I are going to help out with because we are trained professionals and we know how we're doing. We both graduated from prestigious community colleges in the upstate New York area. Yeah, and we've both been on the day. Dad. Yes. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? If you would, do you think that some of them you're probably not using and they're just sitting there collecting, charging you money week after week, month after month? Well, Rocket Money, I'm telling you, it is the personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and help lower your Bill, I've used Rocket Money. It is amazing. I had like 10 subscriptions that were like costing me like $100 a month that I didn't even know I had. I also had like multiple, like I had two cable uh, subscriptions. Rocket Money alerted me and then let me know, girls, I'm doing the Rocket Money ads. Okay, those are my kids in the back mad at me, but Rocket Money's saving us money so I can buy you girls more candy. That's what it is. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 milli willy in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash chaos. That's rocketmoney.com slash chaos. Rocketmoney.com slash chaos. Hey, Chrissy. Uh, Long time listener. Love you guys. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how do you balance your relationship with Jasmine, uh, with kids? Um, I have two kids. Me and my wife are trying to keep things spicy and, you know, keep things going. Uh, let me know. Love you. Bye. Okay, first off, of course, you know, I have to say, keep my wife's name out your mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. Jasmine, that's a good question, buddy. Um so how I balance my relationship with Jasmine and the kids is I have affairs. No, <laughs> no, no. What I honestly do like with, with, you know, like, like with, you know, two kids, you know, you're saying you have two kids, your wife, you're, you know, keep things spicy and keep things going is look, I, I personally think what I try to do is, is I'm in a lucky spot now where that, and my 13-year-old stepson's in school, my eight-year-old daughter's in school, and my two-year-old goes to daycare. So Jazz and I have a blessing of a few hours of like alone time or just adult time on a weekly basis that yeah. I know a lot of parents don't really get for the first few well, years. as you get older, that's the prime time to have sex. Yes. Because it's just like middle of the day, you're actually peaking. Yes. So Jazz, so what I like to do now is when Jazz is like making breakfast or anything like that, I like to envision what her butt's going to look like behind those baggy pajama pants <laughs> with applesauce <laughs> on them. That's what I like to think. What, what, what? <laughs> What she's going to look like without fogged up glasses and her hair in a messy bun. Mm-hmm. What and I and I think about that and 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 that that helps the sex part. 
the relationship part of us, listen, you know, it used to be like, we used to argue a lot about or have problems a lot. Like, you know, are we just together for the kids? Is this all about the kids? The bottom line is, is children become the over encompass encompassing part of your relationship when you have children. So rather than trying to envision what it would be like without them, I just say, we have given each other the greatest, you've given me the greatest gifts that we could ever have. So why don't we just say they're a part of our life now and those moments when they're in school and we don't have them, you and I will work on us. Yeah, but yeah. like, don't ask me, don't, let's not talk about what life is like you know, without them, or would we be together without them when we're with them? Like, let's it's just- It's an irrelevant hypothetical. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because it's not reality. There's no way it could become reality. So right. it's just like, it doesn't matter. This is the current situation. We right. do have kids. Right. And on side, so, yeah, when they're away, when they're out of the house, that is pure right. prime time to work on your relationship. It do, It is tough for most people because they're obviously working during the day. But, you know, you guys just did the Pinot and painting. Yes. Or whatever. Well, no, so, uh, uh, paint and pour. Paint and pour, which is similar shit. It's like, I, listen. And I, by the way, I'm sorry to cut you no, off, no, Mike. This is the last. Paint and pour. Go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. We're going to name names and tell the real story. We have some <laughs> wild stuff to tell you about paint and pour, but I can absolutely only talk about that at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. And I got to hope and pray that Jasmine doesn't now get a subscription. <laughs> Because I would be hot. <laughs> that to me, I mean, you know, I like the fact that you did it. The fact that you did it makes me a little more open to it. Before this moment, it felt like, you know, because I've had some conflict of moving from the city back to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And like, what am I going to become? Am I going to become this fucking suburban chud dad? Like, am I yes. just going to become a fucking dork? And so like, I'm watching all my buddies who aren't in comedy doing paint and pour, doing all this shit, right. like going out with their wives, just tucking their cocks back, wearing a cardigan and looking like fucking absolute beta males in the post pictures. Yep. And so in my head, I've been like completely against that. I will never do something like that with my wife. I will never yeah. fucking paint with her, with other just painted down Painted She dads. might as well just put on a dildo <laughs> and bend me over. Exactly. Then we can paint with the poop I push out. Yes, so, poopy. So, but the fact that you went and did it like, do you actually, was it a good thing for your relationship? Did you guys have fun? Did you bond over that, that it was like a little bit lame or what, what was it? So paint it. And by the way, Mike, you're a better, the, the difference between Mike and I is we both, you know, have wives, kids, all that. But I, when Jazz and I met, we very quickly conceived our first child. So I don't really know. I don't have a relationship with Jasmine outside of us having children. Right. You have a relationship with your wife outside of having children. So those are those are definitely, you know, we those have, definitely build blocks. We, <laughs> that, that, we have taken literally complete opposite roles. I love the fact that you were like, we conceived a child almost immediately. So I don't really know her. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. I just don't know what she's into yeah. or anything like that. I so only all of these are really an opportunity. Know, I only really know her as the mother of my, like as, right, right. As, as you know my partner but also a mother and my child i i don't so so i no, know my wife as a seventh grader and that's what continues to get me hard yes <laughs> yes so and we're Any gonna get time that it doesn't get spicy i just picture yeah. her and her charlotte hornet starter yes. pullover and, and we rock. will get to epstein's island <laughs> um so but but you know i think so so you know to you have a little bit of like a different like point of view but the paint and pour thing, what, what what I notice is I've gotten her, you know, expensive gifts. I've taken her on trips for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I've tried to do this and that and buy her these sneakers she said she wanted. When I gave her the tickets to paint and pour, when I and I and she believed me, because it is the truth, I genuinely was taking an Uber home like three months before Christmas and I saw a paint and pour in the Lower East Side, the sign was like lighting up and I was like, that's, Jasmine loves to paint. She's been telling me that she wants to get back into painting. This is a good Christmas gift for her. Yeah. And I said even- She I loves said, to paint, she grew up poor. Right. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. 100%. <laughs> yes. That's really what drove me, poor. So I said, you know, we had a couple of the arguments we had gotten into at times was that, you know, I don't really know like what it's like to just be alone with the kids. Like when I have to travel for work, she's like, you know, I, we love our kids, but it's so difficult to be like a, almost a single parent mm -hmm. with these kids. And she was like, you know, like you should one day experience that. So I was like, you know what? Either I'll kill her to experience that for <laughs> eternity. Or I said, let me get her tickets to paint and pour. 
I will watch the kids. She can take one of her girlfriends and she can have like a great time. Yeah. So that's what the plan was. I gave her the tickets on Christmas. She literally started like weeping because she was like, this is like an experience. Like, th like you really paid attention to me. It wasn't even that expensive. It was like 50 bucks. That's very and, sweet. And she was like, this is like, I care about this more than like you booking me a trip to Italy. Like, this is like amazing. Like, thank you. And I was like, great. I'm going to think of other cheap ways to get her love. <laughs> So, so, so I said, I said, okay, you know, like whatever, like you'll, you'll go with a friend, babysitter. She called all her friends. None of her friends could go. Every, you know, all of her friends are pregnant. They're like, I'm, I'm not going to do that with you if I'm not stone cold drunk. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you got to come with me. So I was like, all right. So I put on my best pair of Timbaland boots. I said, we're going to walk in there and do it. As soon as we got in there, you know, it's like so dope down there, paint and port really is. They make like, you know, you've seen other places like Pinot Palais, paint and sip, whatever. It's almost like every time I would go past it, I'd be like, this is like old people painting. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like the Lower East Side. Like one of the rooms was like, had the Wu-Tang symbol. The room we were in had all this cool graffiti. I think it was called like the um, the Andy Warhol room. Yeah. Like it was, it's like designed for like people our age to like, you drink, you eat, they have amazing food and you just paint. And as soon as we got in there, I even realized like, this was like a home run of a gift. And Jasmine, like not even like, over emotionally, nothing. She just looked at me and she was like, thank you so much for this, I love you. That's and, great. Yeah, and kiss- It's also such a different vibe than the suburbs, dude, because it's like Tyler Childers or whatever, yeah. like, you know, playing in the background. And we it's felt- like, God damn it. Jazz said this too, when we were on our way home, she's like, I felt like, a, we felt like alive last right. night. Like I feel fully hung over and, and dead you got this boxed morning. up? Oh my God, dude, drinking fucking, you know, Carlo Rossi box wine <laughs> and whatever there. No, they give good drinks in there, like their signature cocktails. So, and which yeah. were awesome and their food. And I was just like a carb alcohol machine. But, um, you know, you brought up the experience. The experience of it was really, really great. And it was absolutely, to answer the, the caller's question, I think things like that, going on experiences with your partner is humongous because you need to feel alive outside of being a parent. You got to yeah. feel alive like in your relationship. And almost, I think what we're going to try to do is schedule in our calendar, which has everything our kids are doing, everything we're supposed to be doing, schedule once every 14 days, a date night, if yeah. we can. At least try. And if we don't hit it every month, fine. But two times a month is what we're going to try to do um, you know, well, and, and it's and simple, like you said, it's like, it's, it, it, it's stuff that you don't necessarily think means anything, but it means a lot. Also the idea of like just bringing wine or doing something that you're kind of not supposed to do is a great date night. Like I, I told you the story, my wife and I went and saw hateful eight when it first came out, right. but in like the 35 millimeter down in the lower East side, and it's a beautiful, like old school kind of balcony movie theater, the whole thing. And so I, we got stoned outside this years ago and we go in, we get two bottles of wine and I'm so high that like, I, I, I freak out. Nicole goes to get the snacks and I'm like, Oh, nobody can see this wine. So I put the wine in my winter coat and then I put the coat in the seat next to me. Right. I'm like, all right, this will, this will be fine. Nobody can see it. She comes back with the, with all the snacks gearing up. I'm stoned to the gills. She's like barely making it up the steps. I forget. I whip up my jacket like this. The bottles of wine fly up in the fucking air, shattered at the feet of the guy sitting next to us. Got Merlot all all over his fucking pants. There's glass everywhere. I'm so high. I took a napkin and started blotting the wine. And the guy like grabbed my arm and goes, pick up the glass, man. And I was like, that's definitely more important. <laughs> with just bare hands, I was picking up the glass and had just lacerations in my fucking hand. <laughs> but still, it's like something we talk about to this day. Yeah. It was just, we had one more bottle of wine that didn't fucking break. It yeah. was a great night. It was a, you know, just a, just an easy thing like that. Then we also took a box of wine into Revolutionary Road, got into an almost relationship ending fight after that because that movie just puts as much stress on a relationship as possible. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I highly recommend bringing booze into any situation where you're not necessarily supposed to. Yes, and if you want to hear the full story about uh, uh, Paint and Port, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, we're naming names. Hello Fresh, AKA Ola Fresca, America's number one meal kit. With Hello Fresh, you get Farm, Violet, you're going to want to hear this. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. doorstep. You skip the trips to the grocery store and you count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why, as I said, it's America's number one meal kit. We use HelloFresh, the kids and I. Uh, we cook. We love it. The food is amazing. I like their chicken bacon ranch personally. It's awesome. 
you save time, yeah. you save money, save the trips to the grocery store. HelloFresh delivers the prepackaged port ingredients. She's, you know what she's fine? Because we have to go to the supermarket because I ran out of HelloFresh, but she's hysterical crying. Please, no. Uh, the breakfast is the most important meal. Why is she crying, Delilah? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. Let me repeat that, okay? Free breakfast for life. That means you're going to enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. That is worth waking up early for. I told you, these people, this company gives away so many deals. I don't know how they make money because their food is amazing. And I just like you're giving away free breakfast for life now. Like, how do you not sign up for this? All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash Chrissy free and use the code Chrissy free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That is free breakfast for life for HelloFresh.com slash Chrissy free with code Chrissy free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, <laughs> quickly, let's talk about the big thing. When does this episode come out, Vito? This episode is out on this Monday, so Monday the 8th. Monday the 8th. So a week ago, the Epstein list came out. And as many of you mentioned, you did see Mike and I's name on it. And we're here to explain <laughs> that um, we were just kind of early in Hollywood career, um, that we, of course, our illustrious Hollywood career that we're broadcasting to you live now from the Slam Magazine headquarters <laughs> in Long Island City. Because nothing says Hollywood like Long Island City. <laughs> Although, I will say, we are blocks away from Silver Cup Studios oh, where yeah. they make Sesame Street. <clears throat> and Sopranos. Yeah. And Sopranos. And yeah. I think 30 Rock. Like, there's a lot of shows. Maybe not 30 Rock, but I think NBC shows. You know what I want to put out into the universe? Mike and I have a television show that films at Silver Cup Studios, and I want to do one day we're doing the podcast from here, and then the next day we're doing a television show at Silver Cup Studios. I like and that. And if you don't grant that wish, then Mike and I will storm Silver Cup Studios armed <laughs> and ready to take hostages. Zip ties. Um, so uh, so some of the big, the biggest name, one of the fu most fun names on the list was David Copperfield. <laughs> yeah. I like that, just, just doing magic tricks. But you got to understand, I don't think just because you were on this list doesn't mean you're necessarily a pet. No, right? and I think actually a lot of the like names that you didn't recognize were just people that worked there. Yes. Or just like regular ass people that were kind of in and yeah. out, didn't know what was going on. I mean, there are some real... There are some heavy hitters on there for sure. Michael you know Jackson, were. Alan Dershowitz was on it. But again, we don't know... So what? Like you flew to the island. It doesn't mean anything. The thing about Stephen Hawking and the midgets, what is up with that? I mean, dude, is there anything better than it, than an astrophysicist? I think that's what he is. An astrophysicist, genius, whatever he is, just immobile. He looks like Krang from fucking Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he, just seeing him melting into his own shoulder, just watching and half giggling to midgets solving equations on a chalkboard that's a little too high. Yeah. That that is just good stuff. Good stuff. It 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 is it is listen, Why pedophile Jeffrey pedophile Epstein like offered that? rewards to disprove claims Stephen Hawking took part in orgy. So I so so you're saying that Eps this is article saying that Epstein was saying that Stephen Hawkins didn't take part in this midget orgy. Yeah, he was trying to he was he was he had his buddy Stephen Hawking back. Okay. He was like, you guys are putting a lot of disrespect on Stephen Hawking's name. He had nothing to do. With the orgies. Right. Okay, so <laughs> the Stephen Hawking midget thing has been around for a long time. I didn't know anything about it. But he's like a he's like a relative coxman. Didn't he cheat on his wife? Like, like twice. Twice. Okay, good yeah, for him. And neither of them were like him. Yeah. They I weren't, mean, you know, they were they neither were of them had the body of a seahorse. They were normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would if I given the opportunity, I would blow Stephen Hawking. Why, Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you, dude? Why Seriously. Just to just to see what you could learn. Not everything you know I mean? is like classified as gay. Like some of the things, just like again, we're talking about experiences. Give your wife the experience of having sex with Stephen Hawking's. Parents. If the vaccine can change our DNA, a load from Stephen Hawking's <laughs> can as well. Seriously, are you surprised he could get hard? Um, does he have I a pump? Yes, yes, because you would think that, with you would think with ALS, which is an upper motor neuron. Disorder, right? Do you know what? Do you know what ALS does to you? It, it, I mean, that amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's actually terrifying. You, you, you talked about, you talked about um, neurons. Okay? Yeah. So the myelin sheath. Think about it like this: the myelin sheath around each of your neurons is like a car. 
mm-hmm. and your neurons are like the highway. The myelin sheath is the car, and the neurons are like the highway. What amyotropic lateral sclerosis, ALS, does, Lou Gehrig's disease, what Stephen Hawking had and died of, is it basically starts to disintegrate the sheaths, and you don't have a car to drive along the neuron pathway to get to your brain. So you'll start to say, move my hand, which I can just immediately do. And your brain will be like, I don't have the car to get to the neuron to tell your brain, to tell your hand to move. So you just stop moving. And then eventually you die when your lungs, myelin sheath neurons say, now you don't breathe anymore. So you're just standing on the side of the brain highway with a stick and a handkerchief waiting for a car to pick you up so you can move your finger. That's it, dude. That sucks. And it slowly but surely almost always kills you. What happened to Stephen Hawking is he got it. He was like the very, very rare breed of person that it stopped but it didn't, it stopped eventually, but it stopped when it had already completely paralyzed him. Yeah, they're like, we'll stop once we turn you into a bass cleft. Yes. <laughs> so um, Some musician really will like that out there. There you go. Um, so, but I thought he couldn't get hard because he was constantly having ice buckets dropped on him. <laughs> it is hard to get, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's very difficult to get, uh, be cold and hard. Yeah, I don't have the boiler in my house right now. The boiler just oh, broke. No. So it's been freezing cold. And I will tell you, I have not been waking up with morning wood. Dude, I've, uh, have you ever tried to have sex in a cold car? Like when you were younger and you didn't have a home to have sex in? The only time I've had sex with anything cold is when I have sex with a cold, dead body. (laughs) (laughs) I have. I've done that, like, balls sucked into your body. You have to, like, roll the condom down. You're not even sure if you're hard or enjoying anything. It's tough stuff. Now, listen, Jeffrey Epstein's private Caribbean island, um, it's a now transformed into a luxury resort. If Do you have an issue going there with the wife and kids? I don't. No. Especially if it's affordable. If I can get a nice price on that, yeah. you know, if we can just go on Expedia and get a nice price, I would do that. Do you know it what I'd beautiful. like to do? I'd like to go there, take a heavy dose of mushrooms and see if I can hear the screams. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? Connect. And you know what else too? It's like, what do you think, dude? You think when you go to Disney World, the kid's never been raped there? Right. Of course they have. No, by Goofy. Exactly, dude. <laughs> so it's like wherever you go- it's like, you don't know the history of every place you go. We just know the history of this, but it's like, it happens everywhere at all times, always. I mean, you so, think there's other, like, if, if you don't think pedophilia is happening on most islands, you're on, kind dude. of out of your mind. You're out of your mind, dude. You're at fully out of your mind. Why have a secluded piece of land? Yeah. If you can't do illegal shit. Exactly. You know? Vito, how much time are we in? What, what's <laughs> We're at 43 minutes. We're at 43 minutes. All right, we're going to go for another few minutes just because I want to, um, I always want to give you guys the best content, but what we have to do now is we have to, just this one maybe, and maybe the next one shorten the episodes because I have completely fucked my schedule. <laughs> and I have a, I have a, a, a callback audition for a Superman movie. So that's no pretty shit. cool. Yeah. yeah. Are you allowed sick. to say that? Huh? Are you allowed to say that? It's one of those things where if that's what costs me the movie, then so be it. Yeah. I'd rather give it to the fans. I'm more loyal to you than fucking Warner Brothers. Is it for the actual... To be Superman? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's to be Superman's Super- wife. <laughs> Superman's gay brother. <laughs> no, it's to be like some like reporter. Oh, cool. You know? Um, so so that and then um and then I um I'm also um writing a I'm I had I'm not writing a book. Somebody is co-writing a book about my career so far with me. Not my career, my like all my comedy bits we're trying to turn them into like essays. It's what like Tom Segura and like, you know, Seinfeld guys, did that. Carlin, Seinfeld guys yeah. I look up to did that. It's like basically just like formulating my comedy so far into a book and just, you know, trying to do that. And, but really the book I think is, cause at first I was like, when I got with this writer, who's amazing, his name's Dan Bova. This guy's great. I was like, okay, like this is going to suck. Like my, not you, like he's amazing, but I was like, who cares about like my comedies in essay form? Like this is dumb. And he was like, no, I think what's, you know, your chaos of your life. I think the selling point of it and what's different about you is how you're able to be a parent, a partner, a person through this chaos. You have all these ways of like trying to keep on the straight and narrow. He's like, so we'll incorporate that to the book. And then I was like, all right, whatever. And then I read the proposal and I was like, this, this proposal, I was like, I swear to God, I was laughing out loud, like cackling, crying, laughing out loud in the proposal. And it's not even about my comedy. It's like what he interjected into my comedy. And then I was like, I want to read this book. Cause I was like, whoever, like all these tips 
like will save my life. And then I was like, oh, I'm the one with the tips. But <laughs> they were just presented in different format from my brain. Like he took my words and was like, but let me make this palatable yeah. to an audience. And then also in turn to me. And I was like, I'd read this fucking book. Do you actually know what that actually, the, what that just exposed what? is how much more you value other people's voice than your own. Yep. Is even like, even just reading your own voice as somebody else's, you're like, there's something to this. Yeah, and then the moment it's attributed to you you're like what fucking mouth breathing idiot yep. thought of this bullshit because i genuinely can't <laughs> possibly ever not even acknowledge it's not like a humility thing it's like i genuinely can't possibly believe like if i've come up with a good idea or a good joke i'm like i either accidentally stole it yeah. and i've heard it before or it just can't be that good and i'm borderline down syndrome and there's no way it's good yeah 100 percent. yeah anytime it, by any the way down syndrome is great up up syndrome I worked with many population of the Down syndrome community. They're yeah. some of the greatest people in the entire world. And literally, if you're like a piece of shit, I would never wish Down syndrome on you because it would make you too good of a person. Yeah. I'd rather you get ALS and have it stop like Stephen Hawking. Speaking <laughs> of Mikey D, Mike DiStefano had that great joke about how he was like, he asked, he was asking people what makes them happy because he had such an awful traumatizing right. life. And he, he was at the Special Olympics and he works with them. And he asked a kid with Down syndrome and the kid said, chocolate milk. Yeah. And he was like, what if he's right? Yep. Like, what if that's it? This kid pure, it seems happier than anybody I've ever met. Pure as, as anything, has no negativity to him. Chocolate milk it is. There you go. Yeah. You just proved my point of absolute parallel thinking. I just thought I wrote and came up with a good idea. And not only did I not think of it, the guy with the same last name, who's a better DeStefano than me, said it first 10 years ago, this is Chrissy Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Go see Mike and myself. Go to MikeCannonComedy.com, ChrisDComedy.com. We got a whole bunch of road dates coming up. Please, for the love of God, buy tickets to my show in Nashville, February 2nd. I just did my shows in California. I am actually doing them uh, uh, next weekend. Oh, actually, no, this episode comes out next Monday. This comes out the 8th. Please, yeah. for the fucking love of God, buy tickets to my shows in San Diego, California this Friday and then downtown Los Angeles this Saturday. I cannot explain to you how low the tickets are, but I'm coming to do the shows anyway because I'm Christy California and I have a meeting with <laughs> Apple General Casting that I have to go to anyway. <laughs> and dude, I, I told you the other day when I was in Michigan, I was so pumped at the influx of chaos fans yes. that are coming out. It's awesome. Thank you guys so much for doing that. And yeah, I'll be in uh, I'll be in Vegas. Come to that. I'll be in Phoenix or the Phoenix area. Chandler, shout out Matthew Perry. Yes. Come to that at the end of uh, January and all over the road. MikeCannonComedy.com. I love you guys thank you so much for the support patreon.com slash christy comedy for a lot of behind the scenes stuff about this episode we're naming names it's going to be wild um and then uh, also shout out dr Pooh. we're going to talk about him next uh next week i love this guy i listened to a literal life-changing uh episode a podcast episode with him and this uh guy steven uh the black british guy is a beautiful man and uh, this guy, Dr. Pooh, all about the gut microbiome. That'll be, we'll talk all about that next week. It's going to be fantastic. Vito, Jihad John, any parting words, anything to say? W longer episodes will come back. Yes. Don't complain. Don't, look, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to yeah. do it. You have to understand that sometimes I'm about quality over quantity. And so it's like just to sit here for an hour, I'd rather give you the fucking goods. I mean, we literally, I told you what ALS was and we talked about Stephen Hawking and exposed myself as a failure. So like, what <laughs> else do you want from me? And I, yes. 15 more minutes. That's it. <laughs>